Good afternoon. So I wanted to bring you a quick word that I hope will encourage you in listening for God. I was listening for God the other day to talk to me about something that was really close to my heart and I wanted to know of course what he thought about it and you know sometimes God has an opinion about stuff and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he talks to us about things and sometimes he doesn't. But this was something I think that I really needed to hear from him on and so I began to pursue him and I got a little frustrated because I just wasn't hearing. Oftentimes I feel like I need to hear from God in some big loud audible thunderous voice and um, that isn't very rarely how he ever speaks and although there are people who hear on an occasion the audible voice of God that is not his common way of speaking to us. We have the written word of God, which is number one primary way that God speaks to us. But he can speak to us through the media. He can speak to us through um, the um, outdoors. He can speak to us through animals, through books that we read. There's uh, a plethora of ways that God can speak to us. And when we box him in and determine that every time we sit down to listen for him, or to talk to him or ask him a question that we're going to hear something um, that's not always the case um, not because God doesn't want to talk to us because I believe the Lord always wants to be in communion with us but I think that God knows what's important what's valuable to him what is um, what are the things that he cares enough about to have a conversation with there are times in the Bible where um, you know the prophets or the disciples were speaking to God and he got you know just they get one quick one-liner sentences we don't always get these downloads and um, sometimes God communicates with them back and forth but most of the time God actually communicates to you with questions so he asks you things it's not because he doesn't know the answer Jesus did the same thing uh, in his ministry on earth it's not because God doesn't know the answer it's because God wants you to get the answer he wants you to get revelation. So, for example, um, if I want to know what God says about me or what he thinks about me or what my position is in Christ as a child of God, I can turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and quickly identify that I am blessed, chosen, loved, uh, adopted, uh, forgiven. I can identify those things out of the scripture because that's what the Bible says about me. But the key comes in when we... When we believe that so just because the word says it and we believe the word doesn't mean that it's really moved from our heart our minds to our heart and i was talking to a friend of mine the other day about this very subject and so taking that belief system and asking or that belief the scriptural belief such as i am loved according to the scriptures i am adopted i am chosen in christ jesus i am blessed with every spiritual blessings taking that a little deeper to not just repeat those words over our minds which is very good but what does it mean to me what does it mean to you if I say you are blessed well what does that mean what does it mean to be blessed and so that's where you start to get into a deeper conversation with the Lord to say God your word says I'm blessed but I don't really understand what blessed means for me what does it mean to be blessed um, you can start with that so that you can go a little deeper uh, with things in, in your conversation with the Lord I want to talk to you about the word hearing so we know that we can hear from God because Jesus said so he said in um, John chapter 10 verse 3 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow let me just move this out of my way and they follow um, nobody else they I'm paraphrasing that because my computer's in my way my phone's in my way and they follow me and that's John chapter 10 27 but a little further up in this uh, text before Jesus said that he said to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out you know I was thinking about that scripture it actually means you know the shepherd has their sheep and the sheep know the shepherd's voice and so he leads them out of the pen moves them from pastor to pastor or whatever but thinking about it from a spiritual perspective because the bible's spiritual what what does that mean for us to me it means that jesus can call us out of any situation 
He can call you out of a pit of addiction. He can call you out of a pit of adultery. He can call you out of a pit of homosexuality. He can call you out of a, a pit of lying uh, and anything else that you may have gotten yourself trapped in as a believer of Christ. He can call you out of it. It's a matter of are we listening? Because the word hear, are we hearing his voice? Uh, when he says that word, uses that word hear, the word hearing is the primary means by which we actually receive divine revelation. To hear is actually to listen or to pay attention and to understand. And so that is where the problem is. Are we paying attention to the Lord when he's speaking to us? Is ho when Holy Spirit is speaking, like I'll get this quickening inside and I'll just know and I'll get something like, for example, I'll get a thought in my head. Like if I carry all this, the things that I've got in my car, for example, up to the office, I'm going to probably drop this one thing I had with me and I'm probably going to break it. So I thought about that because normally I just rush right by those thoughts, but I thought about it. I thought, okay, I believe that the Lord is cautioning me. The Holy Spirit is telling me to be cautious because um, I'm going to carry all that. I know me, I'm going to carry all that stuff up there, but I need to pay close attention to how I do it or I will drop something and break it or I need to make two trips. And that might sound like just such an easy thing, but I have had that happen to me so many times where I heard this quick you know, little voice about something and I didn't listen to it. And the next thing I know, the very something I heard about happened. So that's one way that the Holy Spirit can, can uh, speak to you. Uh, other things is when I read the scriptures and I'm asking God about something, or I'm sorry, when I'm asking God about something, even when I'm not reading the scriptures, I almost always get a scripture quickly. So I know it's not me because it comes up too fast and it comes from a place in here, not my thinking. So I can think about a scripture that applies to a situation, but it's different when it comes from in here and it comes up. And so I'll get this scripture and I'll be like, well, that's my beginning. That's my start. It's important that we don't compare ourselves to other people and how they hear from God. Some people have a flow with the Holy Spirit and they hear from him in a certain way all the time. And that's just the way that they commune with the, with the Lord. And that's great. The other, other times people hear from God in a multitude of ways. I hear from God in a multitude of ways, but mostly I hear from him in scripture because I love the word and I read the word all the time. So because I have so much of it, the word in me, it's easy for him to speak to me. So it's like saying, if you asked me a question, I would ask you, well, what does the word of God say about that? And then you would have to either know the word or go dig it out of the word. For me, I study the word so much that it's a little easier for me to quickly know what that means. And then if God wants to tell me more about that one scripture, then I need to start doing some research to learn more about it. But we don't compare. We, you know, I wrote a blog today about comparison and it's, it's really can be deadly. It can steal your joy because when we compare ourselves, especially when it comes to hearing the voice of God, we may go, well, God doesn't love me like he loves that person because I don't, you know, get to speak that way. I don't get to hear him from that way. But that isn't the truth. You know, Elijah, God loved Elijah so much that Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. He wasn't, he didn't even have to see death. But when Elijah had ran from uh, a Jeze from Jezebel's threats after a big showdown with the prophets of Baal and a bunch of uh, prophets, false prophets were killed, the Bible tells us that he ran to this cave. And in this cave, it says uh, that he heard uh, a great and strong wind. There was an earthquake and even fire, but God's voice wasn't in any of that. Even though just previous to that, God had sent down fire on the altar to prove himself that he was the God of Israel. And uh, yet Elijah this time is seeking him and only hears him in a still small voice. Does that make Elijah any less loved because he didn't hear him in the powerful thunderous sounds or weather patterns or whatever that actually represents. And then there's Moses who actually saw God face to face. You can look it up in, ex in ex Exodus 33, 11. Nobody else talked to God like that. Then there's Peter in the New Testament. He had a vision and he had to see the vision three times before he realized what the command was. And then there's Paul and Paul was blinded before he was able to have the scales fall off his eyes and actually hear God from religion to relationship. And then there's Thomas who, when Jesus was resurrected, before he ascended, he said he had to touch him to believe. So that was, he couldn't hear anything, even though Jesus had opened up the scriptures for him. So there are multitudes of ways. I just want to encourage you. God wants to speak to you. 
You are his creation. He loves people. I know he loves people and he wants to speak to us or he would have already wiped us out. So he loves you. Remember that when you're not hearing from him, check your own heart issues first. Make sure you're not in sin or make sure you have, have done the last thing you heard him tell you to do. But don't give up seeking the voice of God because he does want to speak to you. And don't say God doesn't speak to me. Don't come into an agreement with the enemy of your soul that wants you to think God doesn't speak to you. Repeat those scriptures in John chapter 10 and speak them over yourself that Jesus said, his sheep hear, your vo hear his voice. God bless you on your Jesus journey.